Hello, everyone. Hi. And welcome back to the podcast. Thanks for tuning in. We are It's a Sign, and today we are going to be covering a country that you have never heard of, lost to the chronicles of history, and a country that the world seems to have forgotten, buried in the sands of time. And that, of course, is the country of Tartaria, or Grand Tartaria. And along with discovering this fascinating civilization that seems to have been erased from history, we will be going into the facts as well as discovering probably one of the greatest conspiracies I've ever come across、Ooh. on the internet, as well as some ancient tablets and something known as the Phantom Time Hypothesis. So strap in, relax, and let the episode begin. Yeah, excited. I've never actually heard of this country. Exactly.、Before. That's why、so. I introduced the episode that way. <laughs>、yeah. We've never heard of this country. Yeah. Yeah. So, before we get into the almost legendary、um, reputation of Tartaria, putting the t- yeah,、down. because I, I think she's getting squirmy. squirmy.、Yeah. I think we could have made her a nice bed. <laughs> yeah. People listening, we're just talking about the dog. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, before we get into Tartaria, we're going to cover something called the Phantom Time Hypothesis. And not so much for its credibility, but more so to kind of get our minds thinking and、um, opening up potential possibilities to the fact that history might not be what we know. So. The Phantom Hypothesis contradicts the re- reliability of written history and asks key questions. What if it turned out that some of what we learned in Western schools was nothing but a fictional fabrication? I've been suspicious of that. Yeah, exactly. And what if 300 years of European medieval history was completely fabricated to portray a few rulers as favored children of God awaiting the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? The Phantom Time hypothesis asserts that 297 years of history, 614 to 911 AD, were completely fabricated by the Catholic Church. And while this seems a bit outlandish, it is worth examining these theories.、Um, for history, as we know, is always written from the perspective of the victor and rarely by those defeated. So perhaps our history is actually the greatest fiction written of all time. <laughs> <laughs> so. Just, I'm going to go over the phantom time hypothesis very briefly. So, in 1994, a German historian, Erebert Illig, published a paper titled The Invented Middle Ages The Greatest Forgery in History. And it claims that a conspiracy between the Byzantine Emperor Constantine VII and the Holy Roman Emperor Otto III and the Catholic Pope Sylvester II resulted in a fabrication of history. And it's important to note the Byzantine, that this was during the Byzantine era, and some people speculate this conspiracy、um, was concocted for political agendas and the gains of these various powers at the time、um, of their life. So it centers on the claim that the AD calendar system, or the Anno Domini calendar system, was manipulated such that Otto III's reign. Began exactly on 1000 AD, which suited the narrative of the start of a new Christian millennium. And as a result of this adjustment, medieval chroniclers had to write 297 years of fictional history to hide the time manipulation. Illich's theory also claims that the Byzantine Emperor Constantine VII ordered his scribes and monks to rewrite and alter the small texts and pieces. From the Greek texts and previous history books to align with the Holy Roman Emperor's design timeline. But why would they work together for the benefit of only one man? 
and Illig believed that in 1582, Pope Gregory VII abandoned the Julian calendar, which had been in service since 45 BC, in favor of the Gregorian calendar, which is the system that we use today. And as a result of switching the calendars, Pope Gregory ordered his scribes to add 10 days to the new calendar so that Easter would fall on the correct date. This correction was officially set in motion on October 4th of 1582, which was then corrected to be October 15th, 1582. Though the Pope's manipulation was successful, his time adjustment only accounted for 10 days. However, in the strictest technical terms, the Gregorian chronology was behind by 13. Based on these two discrepancies, Illig calculated that 297 years disappeared from the overall timeline of European history. Illig looked at three main points of evidence to prove that history had been manipulated, and these include the lack of archaeological evidence from this time period, which claimed that Roman architecture appeared long after the fall of Rome in 475 AD. And now this is important because there was a lot of Roman architecture or similar grand monolithic and megalithic um, church structures and sites that were being built. And that will be important when we start to discuss the Tartarian Empire. But that is basic theory. And um, he's basically saying that the Dark Ages were made up and that it was basically to kind of re-justify rule under you know, to make him appear like as this kind of more of a holy figure. Um, but since then, a lot of different scientists and mathematicians and people have kind of been debunking um, his theory, saying the math doesn't really add up. You know, the, the phantom hy time hypothesis isn't really very accurate. But I just brought it up to mention because as we're going to go into the Tartarian Empire, it seems that that empire itself has been written out of history and it seems to fall in line just about with that phantom time hypothesis. And I'm not trying to say that the phantom time hypothesis is mathematically accurate, but I am trying to, I brought it up to kind of, you know, lead to the fact that history is written by the victors. And as we go into the evidence that Tartaria was a civilization that existed we have to ask the question, why the hell were we not taught this in school and why do we know nothing about it? So there's a story circulating regarding a lost country in the chronicles of history. And what really began to intrigue um, researchers was a declassified document by the CIA, which mentions the deletion of this country's history. And this country was meant to have been located in the land of modern Russia, Siberia, and Asia. And it was one of the biggest civilizations that we know. According to the old wor world maps at times, it reached the borders of China and Mongolia. Yet little is known about the people inhabiting the land at the time due to the lack of information people are still speculating if it was an area or an actual country. But as we go deeper into this episode, we will really see that it was a country, there were a people, and they even had their own language. So Europeans during the 19th century and earlier seemed to have called Asian areas Tartary before they explored them and recorded them in greater detail. But was Tartaria's history deleted? So here we have an excerpt of the declassified CIA document created in 1957. So I'm going to read it now. Let us take the matter of history, which along with religion, language, and literature constitute the core of a people's cultural heritage. Here again, the communists have interfered in a shameless manner. For example, on 9th August 1944, the Central Committee of the Communist Party sitting in Moscow issued a directive order, a directive ordering the party's Tartar Provincial Committee to proceed to a scientific revision of the history of Tartaria to liquidate serious shortcomings and mistakes of nationalistic <laughs> character. <laughs> you have to leave that. <laughs> committed by individual writers and historians in dealing with Tartar history. And we're not talking about tartar sauce here. 
We're talking about Tartaria. <laughs> In other words, Tartar history was to be rewritten. Let us be frank was to be falsified in order to eliminate reference to great Russian aggression and to hide the facts of the real course of Tartar-Russian relations. And this was no isolated case. In every Muslim area within the USSR, historians on orders of the Communist Party have rewritten history to distort the facts so that the Russian always appear in good light. Needless to say, histories which present the facts truthfully have been withdrawn and destroyed so that the present and future generations of Muslims are forever denied the chance of learning the true facts of their nation's past. And you can find this on www.cia.gov within their library as a declassified document. And, and this document was declassified in 1998. So here we have some intelligence, offering us insight into the fact that Tartaria was a real place and that the Russians' historians were ordered to rewrite it out of history. So why? Why did they do that? Well, Tartary, or Great Tartary, was a historical region in Asia located between the Caspian Sea, Ural Mountains, and the Pacific Ocean and it encompassed the vast region of the Pontic Caspian Steppe, the Volga Urals and the Caucasus Mountains, Siberia, Inner Asia, Mongolia, and Manchuria. Speaking of the Caucasus Mountains, do you remember? We have an episode about the Caucasus Mountains and the various strange megalithic and monolithic sites that are discovered there, as well as strange alien skulls. Yeah. Um, now, knowledge of Manchuria, Siberia, and Central Asia in Europe prior to the 18th century was limited, and the entire area was known as Tartary, and its inhabitants, the Tartars. And in the early modern period, as understanding of the geography increased, Europeans began to subdivide Tartary into sections with prefixes. But, um, while it is claimed that Tartary was a blanket term, we can actually find a lot, of, a lot of evidence that Tartaria was not just a region before we had explored it, but was an actual country and empire. So here we have some evidence and we're gonna be going into these things um, one by one, kind of looking at some pictures. And we also have flags in, in uh, various history books that have been found um, called the Empire of Tartary. And here is the flag with this dragon looking sort of thing, uh, yellow flag, the black dragon. And it has since been changed to, and now the Kanate of Kazan, which is during the Mongolian rule, kind of adopted that flag. and. In 1824, a map of Tartaria, Chinese Tartaria, and China seem to coexist on the map. In 1850, Mongolia starts to appear where independent Tartary was before, and China seems to be expanding and becoming an empire. So this is very recent. It's not some sort of ancient civilization. It's something that was as near as the 1800s. You know, we were looking into your great grandfather's <laughs> um, lineage, you know, and, you know, he was alive during this time. So, you know, it's only a couple generations Possibly back. Possibly just after. Yeah, exactly. So, um, according to an 1875 map, independent Tartary is located east of the Campion the Caspian Sea, where modern Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, and Uzbekistan are. They all belong to the larger area of Turkestan. Now, Turkestan is also spelled Turkistan, and it's a historical region in Central Asia between Ural and Siberia. So this will come in a bit later when we begin to explore some of the more wilder claims about Tartaria. Here we have a highly decorative 1851 map of independent Tartary by John Tallis and John Rapkin. And it covers the region between the Caspian Sea, like we talked about before, and between Russia and Afghanistan. This map offers a wealth of detail for anyone interested in the Central Asian portion of the ancient Silk Road, 
and it identifies various ca caravan routes um, between these spots and Tartary. Now, when we come to the question of whether Tartaria was a real country or merely just an umbrella term like we would call Asia today, you know, Asia consists of many different countries, you know, Japan, um, China, China, Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia. So there's a lot of different things there, but we still just call it Asia, you know. So many are thinking, oh, Tartaria was just what we used to call that area. But there are mentions and proof of a Tartarian language from different sources and that there were, and we have these languages um, to witness. So let me pull up those pictures for us because they seem to have um, squashed in the document. <laughs> um, so here, the, here we come up with some of the earliest Tartarian language. And I've never mm. seen this sort of script before. It's kind of like, a little bit of like a cross between Arabic and Chinese. Yeah, I think so too. It looks... It almost looks like something you'd find in like a fantasy runic text, <laughs> you know. Mm. But yeah, I do agree with you. It does look like a mixture uh, yeah. of um, Arabic and Chinese and you can see some of the way it's written is like Chinese or Japanese. So yeah. it starts from the top of the page and you read down. Um, here is some more. And actually here it reminds me a lot of Sanskrit with some of these letterings. Um, and the way they join together. Um, but yeah, here we have um, in the general history of China, which is a book by John Baptist Duald, it, sh it says that when they're, he's referring to the Tartarian language and says their characters are of such a nature that they are equally legible either backwards or forwards. To explain myself, if a Tartar presents you an open book and you read it in leisurely, another person who only sees the letters the wrong end upwards shall read faster than you and overtake you when you hesitate. Wherefore, it is impossible to write anything in the Tartarian language, but those in the same room who are any way within view of the writing may overlook you, and especially if your characters are large. It's hard to read this text because it was so old, and um, in, the, in, this, in the olden days they used an F to kind of represent an S, which is, is so it's like hard. I see when I read it, it's like, but those, those in the fame room, <laughs> but you have to actually see that that's an S. Um, notwithstanding all this, there is not a Tartar, but prefers his native language. But basically, um, this person's going over and describing the Tartarian language, and that you can read it upside down, as really well as the same way around, which is very interesting. I guess so they would be like mirror letters. Yeah. And here is a excerpt from the Washington Union in February 13th, 1849. And here it says, a new feature, Mad Anna Bishop, encouraged by the great success in attending her previous concerts, na 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 na. The entertainment will commence with her celebrated musical fantastical scenes of circumstances entitled Las Forgato, in which Mad Anna Bishop will sustain seven distinct characters in appropriate costume and sing in six different languages, Russian, German, English, French, Tartarian, and Italian. So here we have this Very performance, this excerpt from like a newspaper, mm. and it's advertising. And when was that? This was in 1849. So oh, very, so very recent. long ago. Yeah. yeah. It's only like a couple hundred years. Um, it doesn't make sense because like, it, it's like people would have like great grandparents, you know, that would have been Tartarian, right? Yeah. And like they would have had records of that surely or like some kind of evidence of that. So how would you be able to like pull the wool over 
the world's eyes that yeah. this place even existed especially because it's so big yeah so you, you think there's probably hundreds of thousands of people who have heritage from that region or country hmm yeah it's well the thing is back in those days you have no internet the history you get is what yeah is but given even just you. hearing from your family yeah oh we come from a family of tatarians or yeah you know well this when we kind of get into because the theory is that this civilization was erased um we do get like um we think there you know there's some sort of genocide but this gets in all the theories about this get into conspiracy and conjecture and we'll kind of go over the main theory that's being led but it's it is like a fringe theory you know it's mm -hmm. not like historians or people are actually like supporting it with evidence but we but that's why i wanted to go over the evidence that hey tartaria was a real place um now but what happened to it and that's where we can speculate explorer's book um called north and east tartary and he has documented what he saw there and drew pictures of it so that because back then you didn't really have cameras to portable yeah. cameras to take along with you but we have um documentation so here we have a picture of four people standing and clearly labeled above is tartary and we see them wearing some odd types of clothing here Another one, it kind of looks like a mixture of Chinese and Japanese, you know, and Russian and, you know, Middle Eastern and things like that. Um, so here's a portrait of Kami, otherwise known as Bogdichan, the presently ruling Tartarian emperor in the China region, which was drawn in Peking in 1679 and sent by the way of Duria and Mongol land to the author of his work. As we scroll down a bit more, we have what appears to be two people kind of in, you know, sub submission or worship to this man who looks a lot bigger than them. Maybe right? it's a statue. Um, and here we have another. And interesting, it's the top is an idol named Zenu Nomio, referred to by the Tartars of Niuke and Mongolia. And on the bottom here, we have the idol Zenu in China, revered by the Tartars of Niuke. And it's just interesting because Zenu <laughs> is the like weird alien being that Scientology talks about. But <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, that's his name. Same name. Yeah. Interesting. Here are some more Tartarian depictions and it's two female idols yes yeah, so it's the female idol Quan Gin Posa on the left and on the right the female idol idol Quan Gya Pusa and you can see these are pretty huge statues when yeah. they're in reference yeah. to the humans and this reminds me on a lot of Hindu gods you know because the Hindu gods are always depicted with arm you know lots Extra of arms, arms. And in their Hindu dances, they often have a lot of dancers, you know, behind the main dancer, splaying out their arms, you know, in different patterns. Um, and here you have like a Ganesh, another elephant headed being, which is very much like the Indian. And then here we have, uh, there's a trend, there's something written at the bottom of this photo and it says, the hair is removed from the man's face except for the chin. The seams above the pleats is lined with fur. The boots are made of hides with rough sides and the caps are made of red fox. But this is um, from a drawing of the region of Tartaria and the, what this person saw. Here we have a couple peoples looking like warriors and see them smoking a pipe very different clothing than what i normally think of, of you know i don't really kind of have ever seen people looks like very this. middle eastern actually. yeah With the it kind of makes like turban. looks a bit like mix of turkish and russian in, in some way and here we have another picture of tartari woman and child 
And there's just a lot of different illustrations and things of people who had been in this area. Some of them living in tents, a shaman or devil priest in the in the Siberian age re region of Tartaria, as well as different, you know, things, artifacts and tools they found there. And this is called Astrachan, which is meant to be the capital city of Tartaria. And here they have a drawing of Astrachan. And you can see that it has a lot of these spires on top of all the buildings that you would see in like a church or something, those thin metal spires that are meant to be for ornamentation. But we'll kind of get into those a bit later. And even here, you sh we have a depiction of the Great Wall of China suggesting that it was actually the Tartarians who began building the Great Wall of China. Mm. This one I found very interesting, depicting two people in Tartary, one with a big top hat. <laughs> yeah. And we often think of like the West kind of inventing top yeah. hats, so it's strange to see. And then here we have this man with long hair. To the floor. And to the floor with this strange idol that he's holding. And then a man over here <laughs> with this very weird hat. But it has one of those metal things that you would find on the top of like a church spire as well. On top of his head. And, and an antenna. The back of a steel mirror which was found in, in the now, now region of Siberia. With these depictions of symbols that as well look a bit you know, a bit Chinese, but not, you know, mm. strange. They do look, it, that looks more Chinese to me than the script. Yeah. So very strange things that we're seeing here that we've never really seen before. Um, here's a map of the region of Tartaria that was said to have in pink. been once upon a time. Yep. And it's the one in pink. And there's this book by Peter Fleming and it's called Peter Fleming in Tartary and it talks about the Silk Road and the lands that were going on at that time. So here's a little excerpt from from that and he talks about, you know, kind of he kind of describes the scene but he goes on to say that you will not find the name Tartary in your atlas unless it is a very old, out-of-date one, for the name died a century ago as giving place to Mongolia. And the Chinese of Turkestan said that Tartary is not on modern maps because it is kind of being taken over by the other nations well, that are renamed. around it. Yeah. Well, what he's suggesting here is that the Mongolians, the Chinese, and... Uh, at Russians. that time are, are starting to expand their territory. They're starting to, mm -hmm. to conquer. And um, though geographer, geographers and ethnographers refer to the nomadic people through the, whose territory passes Mongols, their ancestors were the Tartars, the men who owed allegiance first to the great and ruthless, ruthless Genghis Khan and later to his grandson Kublai. The Tartars, under a succession of great and ruthless leaders, dominated China during the Middle Ages and maintained a reign of terror. Their rule covered the whole vast region that extended between the Sea of Japan, River Dnieper, and they were born horsemen and grouped together in great bands. So he's kind of going over that the fact that the Mongolians are the descendants of these Tartarians. Um, Crossed the great sweep of plateau and desert where they raided at some of the caravan routes pass and the men of those caravans knew well that if the hordes of Tartars descended upon them, they would be wiped out. So we're kind of talking about, you know, a, a, quite a powerful nation in terms of fighting. Here you can see there's an, a bit of a newer map of the Tartar Confederation and you've seen that Mongolia has expanded um, different regions have expanded and now we only see Tar Tatar here in a very small region. So on that last map that we saw, we saw that M Mongolia existed at the same time 
as Tartaria. So we can't go, oh, Mongolia just, like, Tartaria just changed its name to Mongolia. Yeah. So we have evidence of that as well. So it, it, we know, like, mm, okay, this uh, nation or history of this place is, has been wiped out. It's not just been... Because that happens all the time, you know. Holland got renamed Netherlands. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's wiped out its history. Yeah. Um, but this is like, you know, like, we've never heard of this place. Um we've all heard of Mongolia yeah and we know now like you would know if it was a name change as well wouldn't yeah. you because like just like with the Holland example we know they was called yeah exactly Holland. They would, they, it would just be in the history <laughs> and it the Russian dynasties eventually started to grow to power and the Tsars could easily con- conquer countries and areas And according to the declassified CIA document, even delete some parts of history to hide their actions. And history is no virgin to deleting (laughs) parts of their history. You know, it's quite well known that history is written by the victors and we don't really understand the truth of things because we're only getting a certain side. That's why I think it's very important to kind of dig into these things and see, okay, what's really going on? As Napoleon once said, what is history but a fable agreed upon? But I'll show, okay, so I'll show a page of a book here that I'm about to read from. And in the chapter titled The Tsarist Empire, on the right-hand side of the page, Moscow princes defeat the Tartars and found an empire. So here's one that probably is a history book that kind of just got pushed out of the way and rewritten over. But it says that when the Tartar Golden Horde swept across the steep from Mongolia, for two and a half centuries, the Tartar overlords extracted tribute from the Russian people. They extinguished much of Russia's town life with its industry and commerce, condemning her to remain Argarian. Worst of all, they cut her off from the Western Europe just when the great period of Renaissance progress was beginning. Deprived of the commercial, technological, and humanist advances of Western Europe, Russian took a desperate course. The Tartars befriended the princes of Moscow because they were zealous in squeezing tribute from the people. With Tartar support, these princes steadily extended their Muscovite state, and when at length the Tartar Empire weakened, a Moscow prince, Ivan the Great, 1462 to 1505 attacked the Tartars, completed the unification of an empire based on Moscow, and became the first of the long line of Russian depots. The ruler of Moscow assumed the title Tsar in a Russian form of Caesar. So we hear, we see that the Tartars and the Moscow princes were aligned, and then the Moscow the Russians turned on them and completed their conquering of that region. Okay, so now this is when the conspiracies start to come in. And it's something known as the mud flood and free energy. So if you search for Tartary or Tartaria on the internet, there's a whole um, basic like a whole conspiracy theory that has started to be generated and it shows these um, images of you know sort of tall gothic architecture and these spires sticking out of the top of everything as well as like lamp posts that um, were scattered throughout everywhere and it was said that the Tartarian Empire actually had some sort of free energy and that their entire history was hidden and deleted. According to this conspiracy, the mud flood theory refers to buildings that are half buried in the ground and basically it was done to reset a civilization and the rewriting of history as we know it. And we'll get into a bit more of that, but first I kind of want to go over some more recent findings that happened in 1961. And this refers to something called the Tartaria Tablets. And the Tartaria Tablets were discovered by an archeologist, Nikolai Vlasa, in 
Tran- in Cluj Napoca, which is in Romania. It's where Jesse lives. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so they excavated these sites and found all these clay tablets with various different pictographic sort of symbols etched into them. Each tablet is around 2.5 inches across and the tablets have holes in them with inscriptions only on one side indicating that perhaps the people who made these were wearing them as some sort of talisman. Very small. Yeah. Um, So on every inscription there's a sequenced in um, the symbols are sequenced in rows typical to a system of writing just like we saw above in the Tartarian language how it's Mm -hmm. in a row and two in a single character seems to have just one meaning. Three, some of the standard shapes on the tablets bear resemblance to those used by scribes on artifacts excavated from the Dunabe civilization that existed between 5,500 to 3,500 BC. But basically, these Tartarian tablets have predated Sumerian text, suggesting that there was an ancient civilization not in you know, the, the western part, you know, of the world, but actually far in the east within that Russia-China zone. And now, what do you think of all of that? You think that there was a civilization called Territoria that existed? Yeah, I yeah. think so, because we've got so much evidence with the maps and the, its own language and these sketches that that guy did when he went over there um what like is kind of like a question sticking out in my mind is the image that we saw of the the stuff shooting out of the gothic building and it looking like lamps like so when was that was that before like was that really old before electricity no, it was... Because how did they have yeah. lamps? That's interesting. Well, yeah, so this is where we start I to I want to know more about the mud flood, basically, yeah. because that's sort of, yeah, what's going on there. It looked advanced. Um, did they create a mud flood to erase the history? Mm. Well, yeah. That means it would just be underground, right? Under the yeah. mud, so... Well, let's get into that now. So this is... Let's get into the conspiracy side of things. So... Big disclaimer, and this is not backed really by solid evidence, and it is just a very detailed conspiracy that we just want to cover to just kind of mull over and think about. So here, let's dive into the Tartarian conspiracy, apparent descendants of the Hyperboreans. So we're oh, really we did getting... an episode on that. Yeah. So definitely check out our episode on that if you haven't. Yeah. So the Tartarian conspiracy suggests that churches, cathedrals, mosques, and other buildings of worship were originally etheric power stations, water stations, and sound resonating acoustical hearing, healing centers. And the buildings that religionists use as place of worship in our present day originally functioned as hospitals during the reign of the Tartarian Empire. Tartarian buildings are more similar in function to pyramids and temples found across the world than what we are led to believe by mainstream peer-reviewed science. Through apparent ingenious engineering, intricate architecture, and advanced technology, the Tartarians transformed the earth into a circuit board powered by etheric fields, just like the ancients did with the pyramids and temples. The crosses on top of Tartarian buildings were used as a theoric electrical antenna, which were using, you know, atmospheric energy and connected to the rebar embedded through the building structures. Street lights that existed during the reign of the Tartarian Empire were tall, etheric electrical antennas. And these street lights harnessed the power of the ether, which caused the gases inside of the upper bulb to ionize and fluoresce. For all we know, the upper bulbs that sat on the top of the Tartarian streetlights and found inside the homes of the Tartars themselves were not made from glass, but possibly from a type of quartz crystal. And it was suggested that when substances such as mercury or radium, which reacted with the ether, maybe the bulbs contained, um, reacted with the quartz crystal, creating light. 
So it was said that the Tartarians using ingenious methods in capturing, storing, and releasing the Earth's natural energy. And one of these methods included heat exchangers that are often found on top of or connected to Tartarian homes and buildings. Imagine a roof-mounted glass dome, box pole, column, and through the natural process of the greenhouse effect, heat is captured and trapped inside of these glass heat exchange units. And its heat exchanges were connected to air shafts and air ducts. So all ha someone had to do was flip a switch and fan circulated that trapped hot air through the home or building. It was said that these buildings were also acoustical healing units. Um, and that apparently this is where um, that the parasites, which are said to be the dominating rulers of the time, defeated Tartaria, appropriated their palaces and red power stations worldwide, and turned it into universities, museums, theaters, banks, prefectures, chambers of commerce, sock exchange, churches, high schools, courts, banks, basically that all the architecture and technology of the superior civilization of Tartary was stolen and passed into the hands of the invaders who adapted those buildings for their own use. Yeah, but not as advanced. Huh? But not as advanced. Yeah. Didn't, didn't they took away the, yeah. the idea of, of the free energy. And, yeah. Which is weird. But it, it's weird from a humanitarian point of view. It's not weird from you know people in power yeah just you know who and it said want it, to make money yeah so it said it really happened um you know just over 100 years ago you know verging on 200 where the fake history was really um called in and the conspiracy theorists are saying that this fake history you know is labeled often as Moorish Revival, Maresque, Islamic, Colonial, Medieval, Neoclassical, Baroque, Romanesque, Gothic, Beaux Arts, Eclectic, Tudor, Renaissance, Palladian, and Romanesque, and even Victorian. So it's saying that all these are fake histories. Whoa, that's a lot. Yeah. But those times existed, so... Yeah. It is a bit far-fetched, this theory, yeah. but... We're going to go into it a bit more to see if there's any sort of validity here at all. But history tells us that the first power stations were first established in Cairo, Egypt. Um, and it is the largest and oldest in Egypt in its original form. Now, all Tartaria power stations, small and large, had pipe organs to harmonize and heal the population through sound waves, which is now known as cymatics. And yeah, so it's basically you know, all done to, you know, with sac sacred acoustic geometry. Um, and it's a lot of the things that we kind of attribute to the ancient, ancient days with all the pyramids and the Egyptians and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But they said that there was a revival, you know, in the more modern day that was eventually erased during the great purge of the Tartarians and the religious orders spearheaded by the Romanovs reconstituted these amazing structures into Presbyterian, Catholic, Angelican, and Mormon synagogues and mosque temples, etc. It's basically going over electromagnetic energy and it's talking about how that these theaters and coliseums all have water channels running under them directly and there's these things called star forts, which I'll show you a picture of, which are quite interesting, that actually exist. And I never really knew existed until I was doing the research on um, this episode. Mm, they look pretty cool. This, they're saying that the Tartarian technology was detailed in Tesla's three-dimensional shell, which is created by interfering two Fourier expansion, three-dimensional scalar hemispherical patterns in space so that they pair couple into a dome-like shell of intense ordinary electromagnetic energy. And when we look at some of um, Tesla's coils, we can see these dome, this dome-like structure, which, you know, with the antenna at the top is kind of somewhat like these old cathedrals and giant mosque-like mosque churches and stuff like that. Churches and mosques, yeah. So what, what they're saying is, 
Um, when rotating inside coils, magnetic fields create electrical charges in a mercury vortex. And um, yeah, so they're saying that these were basically atmospheric energy power stations. You know, what's coming to my mind now is that if you, if you, and this isn't that long ago, right? But if you see like in England and probably all around the world, but there'll be old churches and they will have more of that look to it, like this dome look with the antenna thing on top. And now, and obviously we're just like, that's the, that's what churches look like, that's the style of them. But if you look at modern churches in England, um, they don't care about that stuff at all. They'll literally do a, a start a church up in, you know, an old rubbish looking, you know, 60s building that's got none of that cool architecture or even an old community center and mm -hmm. you know and then they're like knocking down a lot of the old churches but it's it's just interesting because it would kind of make sense like were those churches like occupied by the church after they was you know taking down this civilization and you know trying to cover it up and then they're like oh what can we say these weird buildings are oh we'll make churches of these buildings and put stained glass windows in them or i don't know that's just a theory coming to me because it's like interesting mm. how we put and and with all of our buildings like if you think of it uh, we put so much more effort into buildings in the past you know than we do now like why is that is it because those were amazing buildings built by this really intelligent civilization mm. and now we don't need to build buildings like that because we're not using the same kind of technology as those people and you know they don't care so much to do that do you know what i mean no yeah and that's part of the theory is that um they actually knocked down a lot of the the buildings and like even replaced them with country clubs and things that had nothing to do while keeping some of them for like banks and other purposes. Um, but they got rid of a lot of these old structures and some are questioning how those structures were even built by the people at the time. To replace them with like rubbish, low tech buildings that aren't gonna stand the test of time. Yeah. Um, that's another thing. It's like, why is there not really much investment in that anymore? Like, yeah. Buildings seem to be being made with much cheaper materials, even though we have apparently, apparently we have better technology now. But if it's true that we had this like even more advanced civilization than we currently are right now in like a past that wasn't even that long ago, yeah it's very interesting theory yeah because there's a lot of theories that like these huge columns and these big marble things were all drawn by like horse and buggy you know and it's it, there's these old like well, things like chiseled which it would just be impossible to chisel marble yeah. like i've seen some stuff some um articles about that you know stuff chiseled into marble which we don't even have like the tools to do that right now yeah let alone some guy with a, a little chisel and wooden hammer yeah that we're made to think that's all they had back when it was created yeah so speaking about this free energy hypothesis and that the new world order and those who you know the powers that be kind of eradicated this this civilization we're going to turn our attention to perhaps another country that you've never heard of. And that is... Well, I've heard of it. Yeah. You guys have maybe never heard of. But it is actually home to one of the most expensive cities in the world. And it's in the country of Turkmenistan. And when we look on the map, Turkmenistan actually falls under the old Tartarian Empire's region. Nah. But, Makes sense. Um, Ashgabat is, is the, name. the name of the city. 
The strangest thing is, so much money and development has gone into this city, it's though it's heavily restricted to visit and it's practically empty. There's very few mm-hmm. citizens living within this city. Um, we dived actually into Ashgabat, so if you like have been listening to us for a while before we had the video format on YouTube, we did a really interesting episode which was about free energy. Um, and maybe we can revisit some of our old episodes and redo them in the video format for you guys here on YouTube. But we mentioned Ashgabat back then and um, I just remember when I was diving into the research of this place, it's just insane and eerie. Like all the photos, pretty much all the photos that you find online, um, it's just a completely empty city. On and there are YouTubers who have visited this city and they they say something similar like just like the type of architecture is like very advanced as well but they're just walking the streets and there's no one around yeah, yeah it's like and it's, it's so lit up um like the cost the cost of what it would no, it costs the city to light up as much as it lights up because you can look at like night um, nighttime Google map pictures of it mm. and there's so many lights but then if there's like hardly anyone there and there's hard you can see there's hardly any cars on the road or anything or any people there and it's really like over the top like these crazy lit up water fountains and um, and what's very interesting that would cost a lot of money yeah. and that's where they have these buildings that look like uh, free elect possibly well, we'll show, we'll yeah, show images free electricity which would make sense of why they had so, so many lights but what's interesting is the dates the, the city was founded in 1881 which is about the time when the Tartarian Empire according to conspiracy theory was said to have been erased mm. and it was founded by the Turkmen Soviet Socialist Republic so and on the basis of an Ahal, Ahal Teki tribal village and when we take a couple of things into consideration you know we're taking the phantom hypothesis time hypothesis we're talking talking about the erasure of the Tartarian Empire. We're also talking about the declassified CIA documents that say that Tartaria was written out of history by the Soviet Union. And now we have a city that appears seemingly out of nowhere, highly advanced in the 1800s, within, you know, on the edge of Russia in this country called Turkmenistan, that, you know, is we don't really know in terms of like um, technological uh, advancement, but as we begin to look into it, I'm going to start playing some um, a video here for us to look through, and this is some of the different spots. And one of the it's like full of water and these geometric city layouts. So mm-hmm. everything's kind of designed in such a way and at first it looks okay there's quite a lot of modern things here but when we really go into some of the grander structures here is one very geometric that they claim to be a ferris wheel yeah but when no we, one's ever been on it right or no you, you can go on the ferris wheel oh. and that's what pe- they just say that it's a ferris wheel but the way that it looks it looks a lot like a tesla coil and it has a lot of this geometric principles which are said to be related to um, atmospheric energy harvesting, which is what the Tartarians were also um, claimed to have had. And here, as you can see on the top, we have another one of these spires. Mm. And you can see these little rings. And here is another one with this ring again, this ring format. And this always reminds me of the electrical lines, you know, and here it's another like structure that looks like it's meant some sort of electrical conducting but the people of this nation still claim that it's just monuments you know just like washington monument is said to be um just a monument yet it lies on an exact line across the earth with other different um, um monumental structures and 
as we kind of go in, we can see that there's some sort of like bending of the atmospheric pressure and it's grounded down into the Earth's, maybe possibly generating electricity. And when we look here, we have thousands and thousands of these strange light posts. But where are the lights? Hmm. There's no lights here, but they have well, these... Unless that's a light, that could be yeah, a light. Yeah, it could be a small light, but yeah, perhaps. That's, that's probably a light, yeah. but it, it's very interesting design and it could definitely be... But they have holes. The, but wouldn't the design be that the light can work yeah. because that pole yeah. is generating, yeah, generating the electric for the lights to light up? That they don't even need to be hooked up to a circuit. Yeah, and they have whole grids of these lights that light up nothing. You know, it's so yeah. strange. And here again is this architecture. And when we look at some of the um, earlier pictures that we showed of the capital city of Tartaria, um, it has a very similar name to Ashgabat, but I can't um, quite remember off the top of my head. I'll put it right there. But we see similar structures to this. And could this possibly be the remnants of of the Tartarian civilization that has been reclaimed and rewritten over. So we see these spires again um, with these metal poles coming out. And it was said, you know, that the churches and mosques all once utilized this as an atmospheric pressure, um, atmospheric energy um, harvesting. And here's another one. What are the purpose of these things? You know, historians say it's merely ornamental, but again, again, like historians get things wrong a lot of the time. And statistically, a lot of our history is more impossible than it is possible. Um, so we're getting a lot of these structures. Here's another one. And here, this is just crazy. So oh, here's some people at the pool, but like right above them is this giant and here's more of those lamp posts and this giant structure that looks like that glass house, you know, that greenhouse. Here's more domes and spires, a lot of gold on it. But there are these big, almost like, you know, Western looking monuments with a bit of an Arabic twist to them, mm. you know. It's like there's a lot of money being poured into this place um, and look at all those lights holy shit why do you need so many lights I'm here. like what the hell none of our roads in the western world are lit up this much like see how lit up this place is the amount of money and energy you need to light this up as well as like the fact that this is mainly empty this city like why do you need so much light another thing that is interesting about them and i i know some things have changed there right so it might not be the case anymore but they used to pay like really low amount like 10 percent, if not no money for electric over there the mm -hmm. citizens um and obviously it's never a spoke about plates like that whole country you never really hear about it um it's really limited on being able to visit um it has those power grids which are geometric you yeah. know the you can see from google maps like tons of them and they're they've been planted with trees so they're trying to hide this for the future because they're obviously trying to cover it up with the trees um so yeah it's very interesting that yeah there's a lot of interesting things like why have they got free electric over there probably because they use free electricity and you know also the other thing about them is that they're um People like can't, other countries can't start wars with them. Did you read that? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Yeah, which is interesting. Yeah. They're exempt, like you you can't start with them anything. Yeah. It's which is like, why? Is it because they have secrets and information that the West don't want to get out? So if they daren't even try and F with them, then 
the we're all gonna find out about this history yeah um you know it's almost like come on like when do you when have the west left anyone alone yeah yeah who knows like what is it like some sort of deal that they made like you know the russian well there is a deal in the soviet yeah, government it's with know, the like, russians it's a yeah deal. like if you keep secret and you keep this information you can around. keep you living can keep like going. this yeah and um, but you just can't let people in from the west easily you yeah. can't talk about it or put it on the internet what you're doing how you live you know yeah you and have to be completely separate from the world and like so that people just overlook you it's not the same as you know north korea you know north korea are cut off from everyone but everybody knows about them we know so much really about we don't know exactly everything because most people can't go in but you know like it's the, we we hear about it we know yeah. about it. it the west like governments like they want you to know about north korea but they never mention um ashgabat yeah and yeah, so it's interesting. We we have these links, you know, and we all could be speculating. We just I just kind of compiled a lot of things that were a bit interesting to me. I really don't know like I mean it, it seems like the Tartarian Empire was a thing. We have records of, you know, ancient clay tablets six thousand years old. We have more recent records of a language that seems to have been lost to time. Um, we have evidence in different books. We have that CIA document uh, that literally is saying that the Russian government rewrote over the Tartarian history. And then we have within the same region of where Tartaria was meant to span this free energy city that um, is was officially like um, founded in 1881 and made the capital of Turkmen Soviet Socialist Republic in 1924. So we're, we're looking at Isn't a it, Is span. it Turkestan that Ashgabat's in? That used to have a different Turkmenistan. name. Turkmenistan. Yeah, they, that changed, that country changed its name um, yeah. as well. I wonder when it changed its name. Was it yeah. the same year? That would be interesting. Okay, so Astrachan. Was oh, that sounds very similar. Astrachan and Ashgabat. Astrachan was the capital the city hell? of Tartaria. And here, what do we have? But it looks these, so similar. The globes with the spikes on top. The globes with these spikes on top. The, this big kind of city. You know, it looks like a huge enough city. Like, why don't we know it? And we have these castle spires and all these little things that were in the globes that we're seeing with this this exact very similar in in uh, Ashgabat. Yeah. So similar name, similar technology, buildings, it yeah. looks like. And this was drawn in the year 1693. Yeah, so. like it seems so crazy that 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 place just with hardly any population. Look at this, this like, one. Also, how did we... And look at this big wall that's going through it. All these these buildings with these tall... And see, wait, see that crescent thing that's there? I feel like... And look at all these different... Mm. But I feel like that crescent thing was in some of the photos that we watch. Just so there. they're saying that... that it was found like this city was created in 1881 right ashgabat yeah and the, this is the same time that tartarian history was erased then it's so advanced and it's a really small population it's it it's increased every year so back then his population would have been so small and here we how have did it. they build those buildings like in, in that short space of time, I yeah. don't know. But it, it's possible. It's possible. It is possible. Because I know Singapore, it was like... Yeah, but how much population? Probably a lot more. Yeah, a lot more. Uh, but once it was like mainly just some colonial buildings and, you know, a lot of rice workers and farmland and it got developed a lot. But we often think of like attribute it to the Romans or certain um, people but it's like why did Roman 
architecture continue to build and part of the conspiracy theory is that a lot of this Roman architecture is actually Tartarian architecture that has been repurposed. Um, well, what's so frustrating for me anyway, like summing it all up, is that we don't um, have like any evidence like in our history as to why it just disappeared. You know, we have that CIA document saying that, you know, it was written out of our history. Um, and we also have that book that showed the, that, those princes oops, yeah, taking that the princes over. Yeah, took over. Um, the possi- I mean, the main possibility that comes to me, that always comes to me in terms of conspiracy theories is that it was written out because it had free energy and because it was not running a monetizable, meterable, you know, system. fossil fuel energy system. Mm. And we have certain Ford cars back in the day that were running um, purely on like water. And then we have people who have invented water running cars, you know, that have been killed. Um, That might be a a topic to go into, you know, there was a big case with that. We had Tesla running around a self-charging electric car a hundred years ago. So this energy and this technology has come about. Uh, Tesla attributed originally to the ancient Egyptians and now and then he was like rediscovering it. But is it possible that the Tartarians also discovered this energy and that either it died with them, the knowledge, or the knowledge was perf- specifically and purposefully uh, suppressed in order to continue the monetization of the fossil fuel industry, the oil and gas companies and things like that? Mm-hmm. Um, it is a tough one because if we look at like you know, when did cars come out? <laughs> you know, it it's probably in 1672, you know, so cars and automobiles have been around for quite a while. They were around then. So yeah. it is so, believable that the, yeah. they were highly advanced. Yeah. And what is most shocking to me is how recent highly advanced like you know because in our other episodes that we've done you kind of come to this understanding that you know the ancient egyptians were highly advanced so this is kind of shocking to me like to think about the fact that that could be a lot closer in our history than we imagined yeah and you know only going back a couple of centuries yeah because we all we often think like oh ancient history has been rewritten in a lot of ways to hide certain agendas or truths you know when it comes to regarding the the truth of the pyramids and how they were built all those things were like okay that's like that's easier to cover up you know because that was like five thousand years ago that was a long time ago but to think that they were possibly edited and cut and rewrote a history just merely a couple generations ago that really like gets you know under your skin yeah it's just it it's just hard to even comprehend especially because that we have like living relatives of of these people back then so it's just like how did they manage to pull this off it's insane yeah but really interesting and i i have a feeling that this topic is definitely going to come up again in future episodes um that seems like yeah i feel like there's a lot more to dig into when it comes to more recent history being erased and um i'd be interested to see what else we can dig up like what else was removed in more recent history yeah and we're gonna go from covering ancient history to recent history (laughs) yeah (laughs) because part of the conspiracy says that in the 1800s a disaster called the mud flood wiped out a lot of the civilization of Tartaria, which was free wireless energy. 
And also it goes and says that it was populated by some giants. And that's why the doors to these monuments are so huge. And why those statues that we saw in the, in the different, you know, pictures were really large. That yeah. the Tartarian, and that the Tartarians were descendants of the Hyperboreans. Um, How did we get so much small? Larger. Because, <laughs> yeah, well, you know, like our grand and great grandparents were already small. Well, think about Hagrid. You know, his mom. Was <laughs> <laughs> yeah. His mom was a giant, That's facts. and his dad a That's human. Facts. Come on. Uh, yeah, but I mean, if we look at the biblical text, they were. Re- I mean, we did a whole episode proving giants were real. Yeah. I really wish that one was on. We had pictures for I YouTube think, and like, stuff like that. I think like we will have to recover a lot of our old subjects that we did on the, just before we were on YouTube. We covered a lot of really interesting stuff, and maybe just digging up some new stuff to refresh them. Yeah. Um, but there is there's loads of stuff in history, isn't there? Like I remember, God, I could be completely off, but I remember there being something about how. Um, you know, we always speak about the age of the dinosaurs, but there was like another age after that that is hardly spoke about. Mm. Um, that could be something interesting to dive into. Yeah. Like, uh, why do does our history choose to focus on certain things? Yeah. And like miss out, almost skip over other things, and this is what we're seeing with this. Like, we've and- completely skipped over this history of this whole region or country. Yeah, I mean, here I just found something else. It was a um, 1855 source, and it says, On the third day, we came into the solitude upon an imposing majestic monument of antiquity, a large city utterly abandoned. Such remains of ancient cities are not unfrequent occurrence, but it goes on to say that of these old abandoned cities of Tartary, not a tradition remains. They are tombs without an epitaph. Did, did we move into these old tombs and these these abandoned cities? And um, he said that they found a Mongol shepherd amongst the ruins and he knew no more of the place than that it was called the Old Town in a country inhabited by wandering pastoral tribes. And we have um, old depictions of Genghis Khan instead of looking more Chinese as it has been interpreted in the modern day, but he was said to be part of a descendant of the Tartarian Empire. But here we have him in these odd Turkish, you know, Russian mixture of clothing mm, that looking more Turkish. That suit that's um, a lot more similar to the photos that you know, those little drawings that we saw with the strange hats and mm-hmm. people like that and um here we have these very strange dates in Turkey. So um, we have these busts of these old, you know, like Mongolian Khans. And here we have its date, 1227 to 1502. What? That's a weird date, right? It's a long life for a how, person, how right? How long is that? So it's, it's, like, just, it's very strange. And then the person who... It's almost 200 years. It's like, yeah, do the Turkish people know something that we don't? Because, like, here's another one. 552 to 743. What the and hell? that's why a lot of these conspiracy theories are suggesting that these were um, part of some sort of ancient hyperborean descent and here we have 1526 to 1858 375 to 4 and this is Attila the Hun which is kind of a a big name in history 375 to 454 that's about a normal life right that's about I mean 80 to 90 years yeah yeah but the young ones were like almost 200 years old yeah look at look at this one cool bilge Kagan 744 to 1335. What the hell? Like, who's wrote Why those dates you? down? <laughs> and, like, yeah, so they think that there's this big car- cover up, you know, Tartary has its own flag and all of these things, but. I do believe, like. Here, here's a bunch of books. The Conquest of the Great, um, you know, renowned Empire of China by the invasion of the Tartars. You know, we have all these things. 
Tartary, Persia, we have documents um, describing Tartaria, and here we have some Tartarian guy who is looking quite fancy in his, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like you don't really see that sort of fashion. All these lists of Tartary mentioned, and here's that document that we saw before. Um, the yeah, flag. it seemed to be like you know pretty prestigious you and know here you here is proof that tartary was not china it was not this umbrella term here we have the chinese old chinese flag right beside the tartarian flag and the persian you know it was not a umbrella term it had its own region and yeah so the strange thing is that the, another part of the conspiracy theory is that actually Alexander the first, who's from Russia, and Napoleon are on the same medal. And it was said that Napoleon went to war in Russia, um, and he was supposed to attack Moscow. But as we saw before, Moscow were the princes who overtook Tartaria. And here it says in the medal, strength in the unity, will of God, firmness, royalty, love for homeland and people, which is strange considering these guys went to war, to war why is it engraved love and unity in the back? Hmm. So part of this conspiracy is that the French actually helped the Russians to, because um, here you can see some of their military uniforms, but that the war was actually fought against the remaining Tartarians of the time. Hmm. And... Um, when you kind of go into the fact like the Renaissance, all that period, this whole architectural, you know, revival, could people have just been moving into old Tartarian civilizations? Or inspired and, by it, yeah. at least. Yeah. Cool, amazing, great episode, very interesting, and it's always so fun to learn about um, these things. <laughs> Yeah, so thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, feel free to check out some of our other episodes. Um, yeah, Subscribe, if, like, leave a comment, share it. It really helps us. Yeah, it does really help us and helps us to get into that algorithm, you know, yeah. because everything is dictated by that. And if you like our work so much that you feel inspired to buy us a book, um, then you can support us in that way as well. And thank you so much for tuning in. This is, we love doing this. And yeah, love it's so fun. Making these videos. Talking about stuff that, you know, isn't really looked at and s spoke about, you know, is a, is more, like, there's more need for this sort of thing. People talking about, you know, questioning history, especially like today's episode. I mean, yeah. I think that's really interesting. I think we're so, you know, attached to our history. Um, it's like really cool to sort of create some distance there and question it. And Yeah, yeah. We're, we're not saying these are facts, but we are pointing at a lot of different things. And really, it really did get me questioning in terms of at least the existence of a Tartarian Empire and why it's been completely, you know, scrubbed. But we did, I mean, people have obviously done some digging and found its mention in a lot of different places. Um, I would be interested to know if anyone is from the, these, you know, regions. these regions. If you if, have like if you grandparents or great grandparents that you know were Tartarian. Or just, love to hear or that. just had heard about it in general. Yeah. You know, not, or like, were you taught it in school? Because perhaps, you know, because of our education. Maybe in China they are. Yeah. Or Russia. But it seems like, you know, Genghis Khan has been appropriated towards a Mongolian Chinese dis uh, descent. Uh, yeah, a Mongolian descent. Whereas um, in those other images, he was, a lot, he was dressed and looked very different. So it could be that it has been appropriated throughout various cultures, but I am just interested if you are from that part of the world, if you have heard of Tartary um, through public education or something like that. Because I mean, I went to an international school in Southeast Asia and we did world history, you know, we didn't, and we focused on different regions. Mm -hmm. um, so it wasn't like if you're going to America, an American school or, or a British school where you kind of only really 
learn details about the various histories of that nation. European history. Yeah. So yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in and we will see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye.